welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation, along with... CJ Lou from the Fire It Up with CJ show. Woohoo! If you've ever wanted to do great things and invite greatness into your life, then do we have the awesomeness show for you. Today we'll talk about getting into awe, stepping into your awesomeness, and what it means to seek awesomeness in all that you do. That plus we'll talk about book release goodness, a new show after six years, showing up, group attunement, biz planning, I Ching, birthday, shot day, oh my gosh, synchronicity, the importance of sushi, and what in the world a Buddha in the studio has to do with anything. So welcome back to the show, CJ. Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine. All right. Woo! All right. I'm like the first thing I noticed when I got on the phone with you is your Buddha. So tell me all about first of all, what is it made is it what is it made out of? So it, it is a uh, a Buddha fountain. Oh okay. and and it's it's not solid stone or we would never have been able to carry it in here because it's about three quarters of life size. This Buddha is huge. What? And Wow. Yes. This is a big Buddha. When we talked about bringing awesomeness into the studio, I was thinking small. I was thinking, what little bling can we do to set up the studio and make it even better? Jessica shows me this, this massive, <laughs> either androgynous or she Buddha. Um, I, I can't quite determine and said, this is the Buddha. And I'm like, are you kidding me? So I went and looked at all these other things and I said, all right, we're stepping into our awesomeness. Let's go for it. And then there's just massive Buddha showed up at the door. So did, how did, I, did you buy it from a store? So you actually visually saw it and then you knew what tried. you're getting. We went to stores and couldn't find one. Okay. And so we had to order one online. We got one. We read all the reviews and it's an amazing fountain. It, it, it has like glowing gold water that comes out of it. And oh, then I see. we got these golden lights that come up on her. And then there's another violet light and she's, she's really stunning. Wow. Very cool. She helps hold space. And, and I see that she has like a vase on her. I see a flower there. Yep. Jessica put a flower where her, where the water comes out. And the, our main thought when we first got her is why didn't we do this sooner? It's like, it was such an aha moment. How can she be three quarters life size? Does that mean it's like three feet sitting down? Yes. Wow. Exactly. Wow. So she's she's a big Buddha. She she'd be actual size. She's probably a I don't know an eleven or twelve year old Buddha. <laughs> 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 but she could be a real human sitting there. She's huge, and, and she has water flowing through her, and she has a beautiful yellow flower in her in her uh, bowl of water that she's holding as she's sitting full lotus. And then there's some cactuses around her and a salt lamp and two beautiful amber lights that are, are casting a nice glow on her and some other cactus around. And, and then, of course, a whole giant slew of all the automatic writing experience books on the other side. But we just we just built this studio now that feels so good. And there's a couch in the studio that we were going to take out to make more space. But Jessica's like, no. I like the couch. Mm. And now she wants to hang in the couch to be near the Buddha. And it's just, there's an energy in this space now. Mm, nice. Nice. So you have so <sighs> much to, you have your book release. When did that, has it happened? When does it happen? Uh, book release happened on um, Tuesday of this week. Yay. And, and that was magical. We're now the number one angel and spirit guides book in the world. Woo! Oh, Michael. Oh, new, me, new, new angel and spirit guide book in the world. How nice. How do any better than this? Um, and um, it has taken off. Uh, my ego would like it to do even better. It's kind of interesting. Your ego always I have to, to I have a little talk with my ego. It, it got wounded after we released our last two books and it has some clearing and Jessica has been learning these clearing techniques. Pookie, if you can hear this, I know what we get to clear next. <laughs> uh, w w I have these wounds because of our last books, which uh, Barefoot Running a decade ago become a number one indie bestseller, the number one exercise and fitness book on Kindle out of all books worldwide for seven months running. And, and then it got bought by Random House and they tanked the re-release and it just fell hard. Oh no. And, and then Barefoot Walking, which came out a few years later, they planned on it tanking. They took, uh, they used an exercise photo of me for the cover without my head. 
I do know that because I've seen that book cover. <laughs> I call it the headless horseman. I mean, <laughs> how do you expect a book to do when the cover, the head is, I mean, that is like the kiss of death from your publisher. Yes. And, and so I still have some wounds to do, but no. it has been, <laughs> you go boy, it has been incredible. It has gone so, 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 so well. And, and people are getting, from what I understand, three copies, which is what I'm saying. Go get three copies, one for you, one for a loved one, one for somebody desperately in need. And it has taken off. And nice. It is, I don't know if I had it in my hands last time. I don't believe I did. No, oh, beautiful. She has such beautiful energy. This book is like... I'm sure I talked about it. I should have me on camera too. I'm sure I talked about it last time about how it, it was five years and four tries. And I, what I mean by that is there was a special book that needed to be birthed and it needed to be honed on the stone and it took time and it took learning and it wasn't ready and it took time and it took learning. We'll have Ruru in my lap for the rest of the interview. <laughs> It just took me growing into myself, us growing into the practice we were teaching. Now we've taught thousands of people before we had taught hundreds of people when we started this. And so it is such a different and more beautiful book than it ever could have been when we first started writing it. Mm. And so it's like I want to cry. I'm just so proud mm. because it's such a life changing book for people. I'm just I just want to hold this. I remember having having. Um, Swami on the show many years uh, many years ago and you met him in India mm -hmm. and and when I had him on the show um, I had his book and I was caressing his book and he was saying oh that feels too good because <laughs> his face was on the cover and and that's kind of what I'm doing with this book because it's just <laughs> Ramanath Swami right yeah yes that's yes. <laughs> <laughs> you can picture him saying it too <laughs> that is too funny that's so great Michael Thank so um, have you been getting, like, has it been really nice to just hear how it's impacting people? It, it has been incredible. It has been, there's some energetic shift that has taken off recently where we are getting a torrent of emails in right now. And Jessica last week, she's like, have you seen this, Michael? What's going on in email? Person after person writing, person after person after person after person after person after person. A complete shift. I shall... Oh, he just sneezed. Did you hear that? I've never it's... heard a rooster sneeze. <laughs> I'm learning so much about roosters that I ever, I, I never thought I'd learn this much about roosters, frankly. We're, we're both looking in, in parental rooster concern at the moment. Is it... Oh, is that another sneeze? Ah, uh, Jessica says she thinks he ate a treat too fast. Aww. <laughs> So if he starts crowing again, I promised him he would stay because we just finished another interview. He would stay inside in my lap for this oh, one, and he does sweet. like that. So um, there's been such an energetic shift that we have um, we have a guest show on. Well, let's back up. We got a new editor on. Yes, I We've been I talking heard. about this. We're doing a format change. Stepping into your awesomeness means leaning into your fear. Mm -hmm. And we are doing that and making big, big changes on the show. That's so a new we, show that you mentioned before. So you have a, a do you call it a new show or is it like? Yeah, so what we did for the first time, I have been called to be on the mic solo for years. And, and I do that on a YouTube live every Sunday night, which is a live event. And I have a lot of fun. And our live events are now outpacing any of our pre-recorded shows. It's wow. wild. They take off. There's a lot that you get to share. There's a lot that I get to share that you can't really do justice in interviewing somebody else. You have yeah. to help them out, yeah. which is important. You have you uh, it's you are being honored by having them in your show. And so you are going to honor them to help them every every way that you can. But there's so much that we both want to share. And so I've been doing a live event every Sunday night on the YouTube. And that has gone great. And we knew it was come sooner or later. And and. It came, it came both because it was supposed to come. This sounds like a fortune cookie, but it also came at this time because, um, frankly, we haven't done as great of a job dialing back since we've gotten off tour that we desired. Mm -hmm. 
And, and Jessica is going, we have to find a way to slow down. Mm -hmm. Now, constraints are a good thing. Constraints are a great thing. They force you to find different ways to do things. Mm -hmm. And she's like, that's it. You're going to one interview a week. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is Mr. Addict, addicted, I'm better now, addicted mm -hmm. to interviews, love doing them, mm -hmm. where we started with seven interviews a week, then five, then three, then two. She's going, you're going to one interview a week. And I'm like, then it's time. Our second show for the week is going to be Michael interviewing Michael. <laughs> Me speaking on the mic yeah, without, why an, not? without an audience. Yeah. I don't know about you, CJ. But for me, particularly in the past, just putting me on the mic and speaking to the camera without anybody to speak to was scary. Mm. Very, very scary. And the last time I tried it a few years ago, I wasn't ready. And so we tried it last week for the first time. And I got on the mic <laughs> and, and I said, hi, everyone. Are you ready to shine? Meaning to the audience. And then I did my best, probably Elmer Fudd. And I said, I'm very, very afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off to the races. Anyway. It is and so hard to do. I, honestly, I have tried, and it's the worst thing ever. I've, I've even tried using PowerPoint so that it's a little bit like you have something that you're looking at. It's very hard to do. Present. So how did it, so how did it go after you finished this? So I've got, I've, I'm muting in between here to see if Rue stays quiet. The first one went well, but was a little bit different than my usual energy, but people loved it. Mm -hmm. They really loved it. And then I just finished as of an hour ago, my last one. Um, and um, <laughs> hold on one second. Rue's cheering me on one time too many. Let's get him in my lap. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He's really gotten big. He's really, really gotten big, Michael. Well, he's bigger than that. Wow. Wow. What do his talons look like? Let me take a look at his feet. They're, they're, they're not that, that big yet, and hopefully okay. they stay that way. Nice. So he is wow, he's one of the biggest, so big. One of the biggest roosters you will ever, <laughs> ever, ever see. Seriously. So he is huge. Wow. So, with wow. that said, thank you, good boy. Thank you, good boy. Thank you, good boy. So, let's see if wow. he'll stay. It's, it's like hiding, trying to hold a young child who wants to go running all over the house. <laughs> but I thought he likes being held. Uh, he loves being held standing. Sitting is an acquired taste. Oh, so you'd have we, to stand in order for him yeah, to so be. Yeah, so we're going to work on the sitting, though. We're going to do this, and we're going to see how he does for the show. So for those who aren't familiar, I have a giant rooster, a king rooster, <laughs> in my arms right now. He's <laughs> looking all around. He has a giant red comb, super proud, standing super tall, about two and a half inches off of the top of his head, and it's about almost six inches long. That's his crown that he wears, called his comb. And he has these... these um, I don't know, like dangling extensions of his chin coming out on both sides called his, his waddles, which uh, come down a good three inches below him. And he is uh, orange and black eyes, and he is gorgeous. Uh, he, he is, is white, gorgeous. White and black feathers with some gold now appearing. You've got gold highlights. I know you have gold highlights. You do. And um, he is certainly wearing his awesomeness. Mm. He is. So so I went on I went on the mic earlier today and it was a much more comfortable second experience. We're getting better at this. And and it's just good. It's okay, good boy. It's good to challenge yourself. Mm -hmm. And this is a big challenge. And it's interesting. Last week, I don't think anybody can notice it, but about a halfway through, I panicked. Mm. It was an internal panic, a moment of I don't know what to say next. And usually I'm in flow with spirit. But I hit that moment, and maybe you've been there on the camera before, maybe not. And I was like, <gasps> and and I thought of for a moment, I had been interviewing editors a few weeks earlier, and I interviewed this one editor who'd worked with a lot of um, spiritual authors who said he wasn't sure he was into it anymore. Hmm. And I'm like, why am I interviewing you? He said, a job. I'm like, okay. And he goes, but but let's talk, and if there's if there's interest, I can get excited about it. Like, okay, I'll, I'll interview you. I'm game. Get in the interview. And about 10 minutes in, 
all of a sudden he flew at the computer as fast as you could. You heard not for me and hung up. Hung up on me in an interview. <laughs> That's how I felt. Oh my God. Half- That's how I felt halfway through the interview of myself last week. A panicked moment where you want to lunge for the off button. <laughs> Stop the madness. Well, I've had, I did this one presentation and I had all these PowerPoints. I told you about this long, long time ago. And I, I thought, okay, it's time for me not to do this in the PowerPoint. I know what's on here. And so I kind of started going off road and started talking. And then I was like, where am I relative to the PowerPoint? That's and then I happened. stood up and I like shuffled my papers. And then <laughs> I just, said, and I let it go. And I was like, I'm sorry, I lost my place. And then I just tuned in and I said, so here's where we're at right now. You know, because it was just, it's so, there's this kind of, eek, I'm off road. <laughs> also, it's just, it's as if you saw the red and blue lights behind you <laughs> flip on. Exactly. And all of a sudden you're just exactly. coursing with adrenaline and you don't know your name at that point. Exactly. I totally understand what you're talking about. And I'm really proud of you because it is so... You will never know unless you do it yourself. You seem like a person who's crazy talking to themselves, and it just feels so unnerving to be like, so here's what happened to me. <laughs> You're just like a crazy person talking. So, um, and I and I actually have been thinking about doing something similarly, and um, I think just the fear of doing it hasn't had me go up and do it, but you have, you've encouraged me and challenged time, me to perhaps to do that myself. Everybody. Yeah. It, this one today, I only I scared myself silly uh, half as much right before the end where I, I, I think I started speaking gibberish for a moment. Nobody would oh, know that. <laughs> wasn't, I was trying to sew a couple thoughts together and accidentally looked at my notes, which I didn't need at that point. And because I looked at my notes, I'm now getting focused on my notes. And I had a train yep. of thought. Exactly. And but I believe it worked out OK. But um there's something special about it, about stepping into your power in that way. It's why I encourage people to write. I encourage people to uh, public speak, particularly if you are a, um, I think introverts have more to say than anybody else on the planet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have, it reminds me of something that happened a couple weeks ago. I called it a group. Um, two things happened. One is, um, I was, I had a friend who is um, not feeling well. Mm-hmm. Um, he's taking some chemotherapy. And um, um, during one of his sessions that he was doing without mentioning to anyone that he was taking chemotherapy, I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to be there and I'm just going to hold space for him. And so mm-hmm. I was just in the meeting, you know, and he was doing group work with this large audience, like I don't know, hundred people. And I was just holding space And what was interesting is when I was holding the space of, you know, someone would get up and I was really like, do what I do with a individual client. And I was just like holding the energy, feeling into the whole space, feeling what that client was talking about, feeling the group space, feeling the shifts on everything. And I could just feel, okay, I could feel the attention come up. I'm like, oh, someone's having attention. I could feel it in my physical body because there's no inside and out, right? I mean, if I'm feeling it in me, it's really someone else feeling it. So I'm empathically feeling my way through this. And then I would just get like this, like I, I was tuning in, but then the energy I was tuning into started responding back to me. So it was just like this dance of group attunement so like I was tuning in which I never do I'm usually like listening to a person I'm listening it's not like I'm not listening but I'm not like really holding the group energy and holding that person and feeling in awareness what awareness wants to do it was so interesting seeing that that dance of the two things coming together and um, I thought wow I I thought I was doing my friend a favor. I, was, <laughs> I have no idea if I did anything. But he said to me, when you give, you receive. And I was like, but don't give to receive. But when you give, you receive. And um, then I thought, why am I not doing 
I should be doing this in all my group activities. And for some of the groups that I'm part of, I just hang out and like listen. And I'm kind of like, that's interesting. I'm learning. Mm -hmm. But I don't raise my hand because I'm like, oh, why should I raise my hand? I, I don't have anything important to say or, you know, I, you know, I'm, I just want to listen. You know, I, I just kind of go into that place. And I'd had this huge insight. And um, so when we were supposed to share, we all raise our hand in this other class. I'm part of another group I'm part of and I just got on there and showed up like showed up I was like you know what I explained the weekend um, experience that I had and yeah. and I explained to the group like I realize I haven't shown up and I'm not really sure and you know when you show up you have to carry the energy of the group too I mean it takes courage to show up as much as, I mean, it takes, as you know, it takes courage to show up and to hold, and, and I said, so I'm just going to courageously step up here and just show up. And I don't even know what I'm going to say, but I do know that, um, if you don't show up, then you're not even, you're part of the group, but you're not, you, there's more that you can be as part of that group. And so I did that and, and like all these people, it started this whole conversation about showing up and group dynamics. And I think that, a lot of us don't show up, you know, whether it's on air or alone or in meetings or we just don't even show up. Yeah. We're there, but we're not really there. And so, um, yeah, it's kind of, it's interesting. It's hard to show up, right? Did I, did I tell you about our Napoleon Hill? Oh, do you need down? Oh, we'll try down and we'll see how you do here. Oh, oh. Wow. There you go. Nice and gentle. There we go. Did I tell you about our Napoleon Hill classes? No, uh-uh. Oh, my gosh. You want to talk about showing up? All right. I hear dead people. <laughs> Is that what he, he talks to dead people? So I can't believe that I'm sharing this. <laughs> well, I can, and I can't, and I can, and I can't. I'm still, I'm still the kid, kid, 40-some-odd uh, years old, walking through a forest with Jessica, uh, five or six years ago going, you have to write automatic writing. And I'm like, I have to do what? No, 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 no. I'm a straight laced guy. I'm not going to write a book on channeling and angels and all this. I have to do what? Um, last month, Jessica was making our, uh, our logo. Jessica, can you kick him off of there by chance? That's when he'll go singing. I was, I was making the, uh, logo for our new, um, boot camp. Once a month we do a boot camp. And so she's making a, um, I don't know, coming up with a title, coming up with what it's going to look like for the next boot camp. Um, and she was kind of in like automatic graphic design. Mm -hmm. And she's playing with this thing. And she's like, she told me, Michael, your boot camps are done. You've done 12 boot camps. You've done a year of boot camps since the start of COVID. She goes, you're now going to have a manifestation mastery circle. It just appeared before me in this, in this drawing. It's a manifestation mastery circle. And the first one is Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. I'm like, wow, that's really cool. So for four Wednesdays, I'll talk about Think and Grow Rich, and then we'll go on to another uh, master. Uh, next month being Neville Goddard and on from there. And, oh, how does it get any better than this? And then she says to me these words. So what I need you to do is channel Napoleon Hill and see what he has to say. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I said to myself, this is about showing up. That's what we're talking about today is showing up. So I don't remember if his class was going to be Tuesday or Wednesday. I think it was going to be Wednesday. Tuesday morning, I sat down and reached out to Napoleon Hill in my automatic writing. And, and, and I teach in automatic writing how you can do this. It's one thing to teach. Oh, you can. And I've written to loved ones on the other side and stuff. It's one thing to write to people that you have this connection to. It's another thing to just reach out into the ethos and say, hey, Napoleon, you want to come along with me for a party? And the download that I got was so profound. And then the following week, I did it again. And he said, and I could hear him coming in my head for days, getting ready. And then Tuesday morning, I sat down and he said, Mr. Sandler, I've been waiting for you. Nice. There is more information that he gives me for a single day's class than I could teach in about five or six classes. We're three classes in, I believe it is. And I've got a book at this point. Wow. I have all these new laws, all these new understandings about um, 
the, the uh, auto suggestion and the subconscious mind and a definite chief aim and dominant, uh, dominant force and all of this stuff to a whole new level that has come out of my automatic writing. And then this is stepping into yourself. I then have to get on the mic before everybody and go, so I've been talking with Napoleon. <laughs> Well, your audience is going to be okay. Come on. They're fine. If they don't know this, then, like, you're automatic writing for crying out loud. Like, you're they hearing are, something. They are so hungry for this. It has been my best classes ever to an entirely new level. It's insane. And people I are going back it. and they're listening over and over. And they're going, I had to do it three I had to play this back three times just to get all the notes for it. And I go, oh, so I'm giving you too much. I'm confusing you. I'm like, no, we're hungry for this stuff. Give us more. That is awesome, Michael. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm like, so thrilled. I'm so thrilled. And you're inspiring me to, like, do the same because I have the same abilities. But I would be kind of, like, terrified to do it. But why not? No, you do it. I said to Jessica, I said, I'm scared, but I know it's going to work. And I went in. And, and it's interesting. So we're developing a – we're developing a – a discord, a technique, a way of doing this, where I will go in and I'll read just a little bit, maybe even just a few, ch a few, uh, what do you call it? Not chapters, not sentences, paragraphs. There we go. A few paragraphs of the book. And then Napoleon will say, all right, I want you to think about this. I want you to think about this. I want you to go, no, not to the next page, next page, next page. Okay, here, I want you to look at this paragraph. See how that relates to what you've been talking about and what you're teaching. Here, let me expand on that. You've already been talking about this. Let me give you how this is working. Wow. And we're just riffing together and having these conversations and going through the book like he's sitting next to me. Not so much even in a classroom. I don't know if it's, a, it's, it's maybe it's a park. Oh, here it is. Sitting in Cambridge. Across from Harvard, hmm. by the by the, the the newsstand where they have the uh, the chess boards, and he's sitting on one side of the chess board, and you're on the other, and you're flipping through the book together, and you're learning, and I it is it. so cool. And he's he's saying this is like for a great example. He said power of auto suggestion. He said that the way to rewrite your subconscious is through repetition and emotion, uh, repetition, deception, and emotion is how he said about it in the 1930s. That you must deceive your subconscious in order for it to believe you or for in order for you to rewrite it. Mm -hmm. Now he says, that's not quite true. He goes, now based on quantum science, every future is already in existence. The particle, the wave is, collapses into the particle, but the particle is everywhere simultaneously, which means there's an infinitude number of doors that is your future. Mm -hmm. This is something I've taught for a very long time. And he said, when you're going into your subconscious, when you're going into auto suggestion and you're repeating, I am rich, I am rich, I am rich and doing that with emotion, it is not that you're deceiving the subconscious. It is you are choosing a door that already exists. Yeah, that's what Joe Dispenza actually talks about the same thing. And he went on and on and just riffed on that. I love that. Oh, that's so fantastic. Wow. Talk about synchronicity. That really is like... I was talking to um, one of my teachers and he was saying that I said, you know, I'm having these opportunities. Like it was just the most, yesterday was the most bizarre day in the sense that I got a, I talked to someone to get logged on back to a system for predictive index, which I sell. And like, I'm not, haven't been selling a lot. So I wasn't really sure if I can get access to the system anyway. So this is what the phone call was about. And then I'm like, I'm just going to tell people the kind of stuff that I'm interested in now. And so I said, you know, I'm really interested in diversity, equity, inclusion, and creating more harmony. And like, you know, and he's like, well, that's funny because we have a new product out that is actually related to diversity, equity, inclusion. I'm like, oh. And um, he's like, and we need consultants to go talk about this stuff. And I was like, oh, 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 oh. Like, I wasn't expecting his <laughs> phone call to be about that. And I was like, you know, <laughs> In my head, I'm like, and I said, oh, I, I think I'd be interested. I don't know. So that was like the first, that started off my morning. And then the second phone call was someone from the East West Bookstore, which is a very popular metaphysical bookstore here in Seattle and also in the Bay Area. And um, they were calling me to actually interview some of their big guests that are coming um, online to do presentations online. 
I Ooh. said, sure. And he's like, what are you up to? And I was like, I'll tell you what I'm up to. <laughs> so I just like stood there in my basic class. Because basically the two weeks beforehand, I took all of my um, awe, um, automatic writing experiences from um, – a shamanic workshop that I took from September to November, I think it was. So I had four months of just like channeled writing, transmissions like that. I was like, I don't even know what to do with all of this. And so I took it and like sorted it in different buckets so that I had a business plan. So I'm like, okay, these things are aspirational. These things are goals. These things are strategies. Like, cause they were all mixed into like one gigantic, like it was like 86 pages of notes. So I summarized it into 12 pages. But that summary, which I haven't even read since, but that summary really gave me clarity on like a GPS on where I wanted to go and kind of like just a, a gestaltish kind of feeling on what I wanted. So when I met with these folks yesterday, I'm like, here's what I'm interested in doing. And so, and then I said like, for example, I think that there could be a class called Speak Up. And um, it would be for people to like, Synchronicity. yeah, talk about things that like just to show up. I, I, I'm coaching a series of women who are too afraid to show up and they're, I, and there's literally limiting beliefs that I can see that are, are, are preventing them from showing up. And um, even people who in the diversity, equity, inclusion, both women and also people of color are all of a sudden given the opportunity to show up, but they don't even know how to show up. Mm. So I thought, and so I'm just, it's just like <laughs> coming out of my mouth. I'm not really even sure what I'm saying, but I, I'm, I'm speaking from experience and I'm like, so that's an example of something I could do. And he's like, that's great. Why don't we do that in May? And I was like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're now a speaker. I'm like, oh my God, I don't know what I've got myself into. So then my last meeting directly after that was with my spiritual teacher and I had shared with him my business plan and he's like, where do you want to go? I'm like, I, like today I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I have these opportunities, some which, you know, I, I really wanted to log on access and someone else called me. Like I'm not reaching out to do anything. People were calling me for completely different reasons and, you know, we're just sharing and we're coming up with ideas. And I said, but the problem is, is I don't really know what to say yes to and what not to am I like what's in flow and what's not in flow and um what's interesting is my teacher said you know the body is actually one of the best ways to like take the thing and yeah. land it in your body <sighs> and what do you feel so I, I felt about the diversity equity inclusion and it's like neutral and I have this idea of um a new radio show that's called um um it could be this whole speak up thing, but it's basically um, shared humanity where people like, you know, Trump supporters, incredible liberals, vegans, like people who usually are triggering for other people to just show up. And like, I just want to understand what are your values? Because I bet there's core values that I share too. So I just want to understand, like, what is your perspective? Where did you come from that perspective? And like, I just want everyone to love each other. So if maybe we can understand and share with our shared humanity. Maybe we can figure stuff out. So that was the other idea um, that I had. So when I have that, it's like, oh yeah. And that, how does that feel? That feels pretty good. So the doing that feels good. The speak up feels like I felt it in my heart. The, um, the um, shared humanity idea felt like in a high heart, inspirational way. The speak up felt like it felt in the center of my heart. And then um, uh, there was another thing that I've been thinking about, which is to do spirit a spiritual take on news, which is to listen to the news and go like, okay, this is what is happening in the news, but here's what's happening at a higher level and Love do it. something like channeling Lao Tzu or someone like that. And so that's kind of like, oh, that's kind of fun. So like, I feel like all these different things, but to to tune in to synchronicity and know and um, my teacher was saying like when you're completely synchronized you don't have to drop it in your body you're there all the time so you kind of just know what is what's up and I thought oh that is just so so beautiful and um, uh, so I do think that there's just a synchronicity that 
you're displaying in your own work. And that's just happening in this conversation, right? Like we're, you're talking about showing up. I'm thinking about doing a show called Stand Up or Show Up. You know, it's like the same difference. I just think it's so interesting, Michael. I really do think like synchronicity is, uh, it just amazes me and how you don't know, how you really don't know if you're there or not. We were, we were hiking, was it last Saturday, I think it was, and it was our, our warmest hike of the year so far. I had Ruru in my arms, and I was actually quite tired, and we, we've, we've gone through a lot of chi lately, mm -hmm. and, and so we went out what seemed like farther than I was prepared to come back from <laughs> in the desert. Actually, we made our way to an oasis, a true oasis in the oh, desert. Cool. There is such a thing where it, it, in a little rock canyon, you go from completely desert sand to all of a sudden giant palm trees. Oh, cool. And it's like 20 degrees cooler and the palm trees have this like husk drooping down to the sides of them that protects them. And it was wild. And we got there and I sat down and I'm, I'm sitting on a, a fallen palm tree. And um, I said, wow, I'm really tired. I'm like, Angels, guides, I'm going to need your help getting <laughs> back from here. If you can please help me, assist nice. me on my journey. And I looked at my watch and it said 11111. And, and I, I went to Jessica and I'm like, look, 11, one, one, it's, it's 1 o'clock, 11 minutes and 11 seconds or 11 o'clock. Uh, no, 11 o'clock, 11, 11, 11. I'm like, look, look, look. And she's like, oh, OK. Um, and, and didn't think too much about it, except that was pretty cool. And then a minute later, she had picked up her phone uh, to check something and Instagram popped up and it was a post for 11.11. Nice. And, and that post disappears. And then she goes to her email and it's somebody from Denmark or Norway writing about, I keep seeing one, 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 one. What does this mean? <laughs> Synchronicity. I'm telling, I'm telling you, it's like crazy. You, listen and you go, okay, <laughs> I, I hear you. <laughs> Pay attention. <laughs> That's so funny. You know, I um, I woke up on um, my birthday. My birthday was this past Monday. Happy birthday. Thank you. It's How many the, years young now? I'm 58, so it's the um, second Saturn return, which is kind of interesting and exciting and completely appropriate with this whole empty nesting kind of scenario. And... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting like a celebratory. Yes. Thank you, Ruru. So um, I thought uh, what I'd really like to do is get a um, COVID, vac COVID vaccine. And so uh, in Seattle, one of the hospitals, if you volunteer, they give you a shot. And so I've been trying to volunteer for like ever. And uh, like friends of mine are checking 10 to 20 times a day trying to set up to volunteer. And they've, so they've signed up like two or three months ago to get shots yeah, like on February 15th on my birthday. But I thought, I, I, I'm going to wake up and like, it didn't happen. We were late waiting in line. Um, I, 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 I should have told the story a different way. Anyways, we were waiting in line and um, they're going to take a certain number of volunteers. And I counted online and I was like 26. And the person counts, you know, one, two, three, four, five, 25, we'll take your first 25. And then just cleave the line right in front of my husband. And I was like, no. Ah! it's my birthday please give me a shot so I was like oh man this is just not a good birthday day. and I've, I was frozen cold because we'd stood in line for um, maybe two and a half hours in the freezing cold because it was snowing all in Seattle so I, and then I went and had breakfast at my favorite place but it was really cold they didn't have any heaters so I'm like eating scrambled eggs in like and like cold air is coming from my mouth. And I'm like, this is not the birthday I was expecting. Out of sync, not in synchronicity. So, so the next morning, and, I, and, and if it weren't for the rebounder that I just purchased for per your recommendation, I would have like, awesome. it turned the day all around. I was like, I'm going to just jump on this thing. And I was, <laughs> had so much fun on that thing. I love the rebounder. I want some good workouts off off the rebounder, but I I love it. I I've been just going up there and jumping for five minutes for no reason, and it's hard. Jumping for five minutes is tiring on the rebounder. It's a workout. I, so I did the rebounder. I went to sleep. I was like, okay, this is kind of birthday. Let's just pretend this wasn't my birthday. But the day at the end of the day it ended up being good. And I did this I Ching class, and I learned how to cast yarrow sticks. Have you ever done that? 
Do which? Yarrow sticks. So you actually cast sticks and you count them and you do this thing no. where you're counting sticks and then you come up with the six lines of the I Ching. And I learned how to do it. It was so fun. So that was like, you know, so my birthday just ended in this great place, but it was kind of, it, it had kind of a rocky start because I was out of synchronicity. So the next morning I wake up at four and I thought, well, you had, you had attachment. I did have an attachment. Next morning I wake up and I was like, it's four. I'm like, I'm going to sign up for this thing. Cause I, I, I just, I, I'm now like, I know how it works. I'm going to sign up for this. So it's four in the morning. I go over at five forty five. I'm standing in line for a 615 um, waiting list that they won't tell you till 7 o'clock. And um, I got chosen. So I have a COVID vaccine. I got a vaccine. Mm-hmm. And it was so incredible. Just all these people volunteering and all these people getting shots. And I know not everyone believes in shots, but I'm a big proponent of it. And um, well, most I was importantly, just... for everyone out there, you did what you feel is right for you. Yeah. That's the big deal. Yeah. That's what matters most here. Yeah. And so I was just, but I was so, it was like once I, for me and how I'm hard coded, once I got that shot, it was like this instant relief just kind of like poured over my body. And I just felt like, oh my God. And when, when I was getting the shot, I was seeing all these friends of mine from, kids like parents that I knew from preschool kindergarten high school people I used to work with 30 years from now good friends I had they were all (laughs) this one big gathering and it was just like this weird like the you know the next day starting my 58th birthday was just like 59th I don't know it was it was just so incredible um I can't even begin to tell you so I kind of got back on sync so it's just uh it it's just it's interesting when you're on sync and when you're not in sync and when you're not could it be that you were in sync on the day before so that you learned exactly what it would take the next day and that was actually part of the path could be don't know the whole the operative thing that i'm realizing that for covid has taught me is the whole don't know mindset Super abundant, super abundantly clear right now. Um, Okay, so you have some other things that you want to talk about. You're going to talk about the importance of sushi. Are 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 you gonna are you feeding Wuru sushi? Actually, you know he does like sushi. He loves rice. He loves rice a little too much. (laughs) But but we're gonna we're going to. Jessica said earlier today. I'm surprised and was disappointed that we didn't get to celebrate on Tuesday the book release. But I taught. Saturday night or or Tuesday night. And so earlier in the day, Tuesday, I was like, I want to go out for sushi, but there's no time to do that. And and go out around me here means pick up. But there was no time to pick up because the restaurants weren't going to be open until I was teaching. So tonight we're going to go and anchor that in. We have to anchor in the goodness. And she's right. If I don't anchor in the goodness tonight, that's a very big deal because mm-hmm. universe rewards you for what you're grateful for. Yes. And celebration is a form of gratitude. What was that noise? <laughs> <The> pterodactyl. <laughs> don't, you, you, have, you may not understand. I don't know what noises to be concerned about. When not. <laughs> they are not like an ancestor. The di- they are dinosaurs. Jessica was cleaning his feet yesterday and she's like, look at the scales. On his feet. He is an honest to goodness dinosaur. And so when you listen to like Jurassic Park and they have pterodactyl sounds, that's a rooster. Oh my God. When he um, is is either really excited or sees birds in danger, he makes these pterodactyl sounds wow. that are freight train loud. Wow. Okay, you're going to have to record them. So 30, I think she said it's 30 or 32 different vocaliz- known vocalizations a, a, a rooster will make. I think you're going to so, have to record them and then have like a little, like, like the sound effects. Yeah, no, sound effects. Anytime someone says you're like, yeah, welcome to the show. No, no, this is kind of cool because we do have, we have, we have a YouTube membership site, what I've wanted for years, where you click the join button on YouTube and it's nine ninety nine a month. And I do a video daily download every day of what I'm getting from the guides of awe. And, and when you become a, um, it's called the inner circle. When you become an inner circle member, 
you get different emojis you can play with. There's a ruru emoji. There's a, a Jessica jumping in a woohoo emoji. Cute. But now what you're talking about is sound emojis. Yeah. Where you can press... <laughs> or whatever that noise was that he sneezed. I, I, wonder, <laughs> I wonder how we would, would you get like a little sound box, like a little keyboard and you just, because I mean, they did this. If you followed any old radio back in the twenties or something, they'd have, you know, a cowbell there. They'd have a bottle, which they'd clink on. They'd have a little thing. Yeah. You'd have all these little types, things. types, type. They don't no longer have keyboards or whatever, but not keyboards, typewriters, but yeah, typing. That could be kind of fun to have yeah. all the woo sounds. But there's here. been like I'm at least sure four of them on the show alone. Have your editor <laughs> edit them out. We're doing everything about up leveling. I'm not sure if that would be up leveling or taking us to kind of a gutter level. But still be fun. Uh, woo woo sound effects. Yes, I think it's a possibility. And, and if nothing else, we need to get the button. Although I'm so anything that I buy, I say this is going into a landfill one uh, one day, and so I'm, I'm meticulous about this. But I do still like the button from Is It Staples? Every everybody knows that the that was easy. <laughs> you don't what? know this button. It's a big red button, and and you can keep it in your kitchen or your desk, and you press the button, and it says that was easy. Oh, and nice. So you have a big red button that you keep on your kitchen table, it's and, ah! and it's, it's it's a room. <laughs> <laughs> Although we have the real thing, so I'm not sure how often we'd be trying exactly. to Exactly. Probably Rue would be starting getting pissed off at himself. He'd be like, huh? <laughs> There's Actually, another rooster in here. You don't, watch, you don't watch a movie that has a rooster crowing. That, that'll that drive him insane. Um, if he sees the reflection, he's gotten better. But still, first thing in the morning, he will attack the glass, the, the sliding glass doors and the stovetop <laughs> until he goes, oh, wait, that's me. Um, <laughs> Yeah, maybe don't do the sound effects. You can make him go go mad with com- competitive madness and he insanity. Is the king rooster. There's another rooster somewhere in the neighborhood, and and he drives that rooster nuts because we go on walks every morning. Uh, it was around 5:30 this morning. Rue wanted to walk at five, so we got the headlamp on and we're walking. But if that rooster was to get up and crow, Rue would crow back. Except. Rue would be, you know, we're a mile away, we're half a mile away, we're here, we're there. The other rooster must be going, he's everywhere. (laughs) (laughs) He's an omnipresent rooster. He's omnipotent. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God, Rue has provided endless entertainment. Uh, who would have known how entertaining <laughs> would be? He's making me laugh like all the time. And then I'll tell my husband stories about like, oh, well, guess what Ruru is up to now? <laughs> Endless entertainment. Okay, so I don't know if you can talk about it, but can you tell us about your other stuff? Well, the other stuff is in, I have a contract to sign. We're starting down this road. I won't go into any details yet, but... Uh, There'll be um, three groups of four producers working with us on a TV show. So nice. it's the next step, and it's a real deal. And and whether it happens or not, I have no idea, but it's energy. And, and, and so the sense of inevitability is it's coming, whether it's coming this iteration or another. I want to say it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm excited, but I'm just allowing that to move ahead, and whatever comes out of that comes. But it is, it has, like you're seeing with your projects, a life of its own. I'm not driving this ship. Mm-hmm. That's perhaps the coolest part about it, the I'm not driving it. Right. I want it in its right iteration. I want something. We want more grace, more ease, more peace, less on the work and certainly less the drive and strive side of things. So if it comes about, it gets to come about with tremendous, tremendous flow. Yeah, because grace. We need we need to be able to throttle back. Jessica needs a ton of rest. This push to get out the book and everything that's going on for this class. She's she's headed Sunday out for a five day vacation. I'm so both happy for her and I'm going oh boy with all the animals to myself. Um, it'll go fine. I I I I'll, I'll in advance go oh boy and then it it'll be a piece of cake. Um, but she needs that. And so I get to think about her even more so with every step because I am a marathon runner's marathon runner. I'll just keep going and going and going. And we get to really, as you're doing by feeling into your body, say, okay, these are the chips that I have. 
And okay, you can call it a limiting belief. I'm not going to call it that. I'm going to say these are the chips I get to play with. Where do we want to play? Where do we want to cut back? Yeah. What do we get to grow? What do we get to trim? And start to be even more selective about that. Yeah. I mean, you've been refining and honing and, and getting clear over the last couple of years, like from the church presentation that you did. Remember the yeah, church? Absolutely. Yeah. So there's just like, you just have been like tightening and tightening and focusing and focusing and focusing and focusing, right? And you're just getting clear. And that's how you do it. Because how else do you know unless you do it that way? You try so it, true. you know, you try it, you know, you know more, you don't know. You know, you don't want to do that. You know, you want to do that. Like, you won't know until you... There's there's a new um, social media uh, platform. I'm sure you know of it in the Northwest. It's called Clubhouse. Mm -hmm. And you get an invite, you go on it, and it's it's kind of more of a podcasty platform. It's an audio social media site. And it, and it feels tailor-made for us. And we've done it a couple times with some great uh, great but modest success to start. And, and the question becomes, do I want to do this? And do I want to explore that road? It seems really positive, And yet it's another, another time commitment. Mm -hmm. And I really get to feel into this. It, from an alignment point of view, or at least on paper, seems right. Mm -hmm. But is this the one more thing for the camel? Or this is this something that lights you up and you won't know. Like you're saying, you tighten up, you tighten up. You play, you see how it feels. You play a little bit more, you see how it feels. Are you called back to play more? Maybe you play more. Or maybe you say, no, that was enough. I'm, I'm good for now. Right. But we lean into all of these things. As you're saying, we show up and we see without judgment, without attachment. It works great, great. It doesn't work great. Hey, that's great too. I got my, uh, uh, my vaccination, so to speak, and I can already see the emails coming in. Guys, I love everybody. I'm, I'm making no statement about anybody, anything. I love you, I love you, I love you. But, but you go, you go, you wait in line, it doesn't work out, great. But you learned, you go the next day, it does work out, great. You just keep showing up. Mm -hmm. That's how you know. <laughs> that's how you learn. And that's how you'll know. And then in between now and then, you'll start developing a sense to just know. That's what I hope is to kind of just refine my ability to know when I know. That to me, going back to your teacher, is not an inside job as in a spiritual job. Your body knows. Yeah. Your body always knows. You yeah. feel into it and you go, how does this make me feel? Yeah. Yeah. And I had two times happening that this week and I still have to do a lot more work on some of the stuff to get like more honed in on knowing. But in some ways I've just determined that I'm not going to do anything until I tune into my guides to know. Woo <laughs> oh, no, your cat participate. It's like, Ruru is not the only one who's going to participate no, no. here. <laughs> e -I -E -I -O. <laughs> So I'm good, Michael. How about you? I think this is going to be a really beautiful week for people. It's time. It's February. Actually, by the time you're listening to this, it's going into March. Things in theory are coming into bloom, even though I know as we're speaking about this, there are parts of the country that never freeze over, that are like in tundra right now. But there's an energy of growth, of expansion at this time right now. And so show up. Whatever that means, show up into your greatness. Challenge yourself. And I challenge you particularly, look for where there's a niggling. So the niggling for us was after, been almost 1,500 interviews, 2,000 plus shows if you include the YouTube show. Mm. There has been this niggling in me saying, when are you going to speak for yourself, Michael? Mm. And it's not that I haven't been doing a bunch of good. But that niggling was growing louder and louder until finally you're like, I give up, let's do it. So we all have that niggling inside of us, that thing that we're pushing against that we know would be really good for us if we would step into it. Mm -hmm. Why not now? Yeah, love it. Woohoo! <laughs> That's all I've got, CJ. You're stepping into your awesomeness. And every, like, isn't that the, per that was the theme of the show. And you're stepping into your awesomeness, meaning being in synchronicity, showing up and seeing what sticks. And, and, and I, you know, the, the play on awe, the automatic writing experience, awe, awesome. You are stepping into that greatness.
-hmm. And that greatness is always inside of you. It's always been there. It's always just waiting until you feel the time is right. I actually, I call it the no mas moment. The I'm not going to take it anymore. I've got to do it. And so I'm trying to help give people the energy today that if you've been on the fence, whether you do it or not, why not now? Yeah, if not now, when? What are you waiting for? That's kind of a more East Coast version way of putting it. <laughs> well, and, and I have still, I, I, I snagged it out of the closet in our house in Colorado. It is here somewhere. I have this beautiful diagram that Jessica made, and it wasn't the first one to be made. It's called a round to it. Hmm. And, and what it says on this round to it is you've now been gifted a round to it. You said someday you would do this when you got a round to it. Well, now you have one. I love it. Woo! You're going to have to bring that up the next show. All right. I want to see We it. got round to it. All right. <laughs> Let's call it good from here. I send love. I send love. I send love wherever you are. If not now. When? <laughs> <laughs> and shine bright. Love you guys. Bye. <laughs> it was beautiful, CJ. Yeah. <laughs>